Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's past 74 today and we are back to finish off our eighth season in charge. It's an interesting one as well because we've just wrapped up the title with two games to spare. Thankfully, we did beat TNS in the reverse fixture. And now we've got a chance to see and develop some of our youngsters who have been waiting in the wings all season. But it still feels like a bit of a disappointment because if we're being honest, we would have expected to win more than the league and the league cup. So it's a good sign for Welsh football, but perhaps for us, it's not the greatest sign in the world. So if you're looking forward to seeing the youngsters in action, seeing which one of them are going to be stars for the future, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. We've had a big few episodes in the head coach, so if you have missed any of that, please do catch up with it in the eye above. And you can find links to all the other playlists there, as well as the podcast channel too. And hopefully, at this point, we'll be doing our first Twitch stream very soon. There's a link to that down in the description below, so you can go and follow over there if you wish to. But let's talk about our two games today, Aberystwyth and Barry Town. Now, they're massive games, not for us so much, although we are going to get to blood in some youngsters and see how good they are. But we're basically going to be deciding who finishes third. Because Aberystwyth and Barry are both on 48 points. We've struggled with Aberystwyth all season. Barry have been more consistent and are a better side. So it's going to be interesting to see who pips the other to the post. Carmarthen have sacked their manager. They've got a better new one and he's flying them up the league. So it looks like if they can pip Newtown, they're going to be in the Europa playoff. Although that depends on the winners of the Welsh Cup. And last time I looked, it was very interesting. There were second tier sides. There were bottom half sides. So let's see who's in the final. It is Haverford West v Aberystwyth. So Haverford West a 10th, Aberystwyth a 4th. So basically, if Aberystwyth can win that and Barry can finish 3rd, then that should be our European 4 next year. And I think that's the strongest one in the country, particularly given the way they strengthened when they came up last summer. So a great recovery from them. But let's have a look at our couple of results off camera. So we played TNS in a game we had to win. And we weren't convincing, to be brutally honest, but we got the job done. It was one all early on as Max Dean's goal was cancelled out by Billy Vigar. Cottrell and Max Dean started the second half on fire before Noah Daly, our former Cliftonville hero, gave the New Saints a chance. And Max Dean completed his hat-trick with 20 to go. It was a comfortable win in the end. Then, after a couple of weeks break, probably the best moment of the season came. We had to win to wrap up the league. And we've often been poor in cup finals or maybe not delivered our best in the big games. And in this one, we were sublime. Luca Cannell got the first goal just a couple of minutes in. A Max Dean brace, a goal from Ian Brooks and a penalty from Joe Duffy. Made it 5-0 before Bala got a red card. And in the end, we bought three of the youngsters off the bench. All of whom will probably be starting today. So things looking quite good. We've won the Welsh League, which means we keep our job. There's going to be the odd year we don't win one or two of the Cups. We have to accept that. And with TNS getting stronger, it is going to be a competition in future particularly in terms of the Welsh title race. I mean, last year we won it with three games to go, this year with two games to go. But overall, the competition is getting there with TNS. Now, what we need from Barry or Aberystwyth is one of those to really invest in the summer and step up. But I'm sure Europe will determine how that happens. So we're going to get into the first game against Aberystwyth today. We're going to try and get a few of the youngsters in. We're going to rotate quite heavily. And we'll be back in a minute with the first 11 and probably a few more on the bench as well. So here's what we've gone for today. The only one who would have started who isn't is Gwyn Morgan at right back. Just because he's only just coming back from injury. But he's actually match hanking for current ability now. He's not far behind on potential and has lost his face. Not quite sure how all of those things have happened together. All the other youngsters have got a face. Where's Morgan's gone? The faceless man is on the bench today. George Wickham stays in goal. Yes, then Weaver stays at left back. Cannell's in the middle. Max Dean up front. Trying to give us a spine of quality and players that have played at a higher level. Harvey Lewis, no stranger to the first team, of course. The same really applies to Tom Jones in the number 10, who's just coming on leaps and bounds. He signs his pro deal soon and should go on from strength to strength from there. It means Jack Hankins in at right back, Peter Holden and Stefan Banks together at centre half. Martin Sinclair joins Luca Cannell in the middle, and Sean Banks joins Max Dean up front. I'm not sure he's going to make it in truth, but... We want to give the youngsters a chance. Rickards and Morgan, two more on the bench if needed. Hopefully both of those will get an out in. But let's go and get into it. It's the penultimate game of the season. And there's some exciting talent we're going to get to see for the first time on camera. Let's see if they can shine. So it's seven changes for us from the last match. It's a very strong Aberystwyth team. McMinnamy up front, we know is class. Gwyn Tudor, a former player of ours, we know is good. 
And they've signed a few other decent ones as well. So they are getting stronger this side. But what we've got to do is keep our good run going and get some of these youngsters bedded in. They've got massive potential and they've not really played senior football. Bar the odd sub appearance at three or four goals up. So if we can get the best out of them the next few weeks, then potentially for the summer, we've got something really to look forward to. And of course, we're also going to be deciding who finishes third. So the boys have got some responsibility to the league as McMinnamy puts the ball in from the cross. Banks heads away as far as McMinnamy again into the back post and there's Stefan Banks for the second time. Out to Max Dean, one of the stars who's countering at speed. He's got two in the middle. The number 10 getting up as is Banks, the centre forwards, and he slides it in beautifully. He's one of the ones who hasn't got the potential to make it here. And I was desperately in January, once we signed Andrew, trying to get him out on loan. But no one would take him, even with us paying all the wages. I'd really like someone in the Welsh League to take a punt on him, because he'd improve them no end. As the ball's cleared to Jack Hankin, Luca Cannell picks it up for Lewin in the holding role. He's got the centre-halves to play to. Instead goes forward to Cannell, who finds Hankin running down the right. Again, three men in the box at a minimum. Is something this tactic really affords itself to. As Lewis gets on the end of the clearance, Sinclair the youngster loses out. Only falls for Stefan Banks on halfway though. And he starts again with George Wickens. Out by the edge of his D, outside the box, finds Holding. Nice one too into Lewis and now Banks. Good football here from Banger. And then the long ball releases them. Banks to Banks and Banks puts it in. There's the confusion in the commentary. Stefan Banks to Sean Banks to the back of the net. 2-0 Banger City, a wonderful performance. And you can see some of these youngsters have really got talent. We still look a bit susceptible. We're giving away a lot of fouls. And Stewart's hit the bar there from the McMinnamy cross. Canell hacks it clear, but we're 20 minutes gone. We're very happy with this performance so far. And we've got a throw on the left-hand side. It's a fairly advanced position, but yes, then Weaver gives it away. If we're doing well for the last game, we might start Rickards there. But he's not made any appearances for the senior squad, so I'm more reluctant to put him in. As Max Dean plays it to Cannell, out to Hankin. Dean's running off him again, but instead back into midfield. The anchor man switches it left to Weaver. We're really keeping it well here. This is one of our best performances in a long time. Weaver released by Sinclair. Back to him again. Sinclair delivers. And Hopkins just beats Jones to it in the box. Harvey Lewitt again, all the way back to the keeper. 60-yard ball there over the striker's head. I'm not quite sure why we needed to see that. But George Wickens releases it for Hankin. Here's Luca Cannell. Look how fluid we are. Even with completely new players, the shape and the tactic is the same. Max Dean into the box. No proposition at all. And they've given a penalty. Banks has put it in the corner just past the keeper. That's happened a couple of times on camera this season. We've been given a penalty, but the full highlight hasn't played out. And there we go. Sean Banks completes a hat-trick in half an hour. And if a Welsh club wants to come and sign him now, surely, surely he looks worth the money. It's nearly half time. I guess what's impressed me most in this one is we haven't just had 20 shots and loads of efforts from the edge of the box. We've worked really good chances. We've had four shots. They've all been on target and three of them have been goals. As Weaver chips it forward, Dean's going to get there. He makes it four, does he? No, the flag's up. It looked a bit of a strange one and that he may have had an advantage. So we're not going to argue too much with that decision. But it's going to be 3-0 at half time. Been a really solid performance, to be honest. And although we probably haven't deserved three goals... We'll certainly take it. We get to half time. We're going to praise the lads. And in the second half, we just want the same from the youngsters. We'll give it 10 minutes and then we'll find some subs. Right, we're almost at the hour mark. So I'm going to replace both of the fullbacks. Gwyn Morgan on at right back. Sean Rickards on at left back. And we'll leave the last one another 10 minutes. We might have to rest Sinclair because we've got to bear in mind that for him, this is the highest level he's ever started a game at. And he'll probably be knackered. Though he's on the ball here and finds Banks pretty well. Banks on a hat-trick, we could take him off as well. As Tom Jones picks it up in the middle, he's actually the one young star that's not played that well today. And he's the one that's been in the first team a lot of the season. Though he's released Max Dean here, again, not quite enough on the ball. Been a poor display from him. Maybe something to worry about. Could just be a one-off though. They're not going to be consistent at this age. As Hopkins heads away for Aberystwyth to Roberts. Charging at the new look back four. In fact, there's no experience in there whatsoever. They're all 16 or 17. As Jones picks it up to Luca Cannell. I think he will be the last sub because he's not really stood out today. And he's not a youngster anymore. He's 26. As Banks is in again, the centre-half's made an awful misjudgment. But Banks hits the post and that one goes begging. It remains 3-0 to Bangor City. Let's go and take off Luca Cannell. Final sub of the day. He'll be replaced by either Woods or Williams. Do you know what? I'm going to go for Archie Woods because he's a little bit younger. He's only 24 and he's still got more potential to grow into. As Jones gives the ball away yet again, he's not had a good game, the kid. As Rickards clears, Banks flicks on for Max Dean. 
What we'll do with the likes of Dean and Weaver and that who have started. So Dean will swap for Duffy the last game. Gwyn Morgan hoofs it forward. Max Dean's in. He's got to the byline. He's going to have to cut it back here, I think. Into Tom Jones. Back to Dean again. Into Woods. He shoots just wide. Really good football again from Bangor City. And this half, we are coming to life a bit. But as I said, the last game of the season, we'll just swap the experienced ones. So we'll swap Dean for Duffy. We'll probably swap Cannell for Williams, the other centre midfielder. Just sort of mix it up a bit there. But two minutes to go. It's been a comprehensive win. We'll have to wait and see what Barry Town United do. Because we're yet to know if the last game will be crucial or not. A brilliant display though from Bangor City. A comfortable victory in the end. We're very pleased with the performance. We're happy with the result. With the last game of the season to come, these youngsters are starting to look very good. We're back to face Barry Town United, and they've actually had a very good penultimate day of the season. They won 2-0 at TNS, and as a result of that, they've basically wrapped up their position in the league already. The goal difference swing is massive, and with our youngsters, we're not going to throw that away. Aberystwyth with themselves, I mean, the second half of the season, they've been pretty poor, to be honest. If you have a look since they've been playing the top sides... Earlier on in the season, when they were playing the sort of lower teams in the league, they were flying. In other news, Cardiff Met Uni have been relegated. Now, they're the side who I claimed at the start of the season had made the most exciting transfer ever with MJ Williams. I don't know what's happened. Spent years in a football league. I know he had that injury against us on the first day. But he's still a very good player, and he's just completely dropped off a cliff. And as have they. And Cardiff Met Uni now down to the second tier. And they're joined by Colwyn Bay. Which is a shame because they were investing. They were bringing good players in. They've got their own Tom Jones, a right wing back. But they just they never produced in terms of results. They were so poor at the back. And I think the problem we've got here in this Welsh league now is that the managers aren't keeping up with the players. So hopefully the next lot of rotations or replacements as managers will be better improvements. But for us, let's go and make our changes to the first 11. And in a moment... I'll show you the one that's going to start today. So, as promised, we've rotated a few of the experienced options, mainly the ones that we mentioned. Duffy and Williams in, Cannell and Dean are out. In terms of defence, we've brought in the two young fullbacks. Weaver will get his early summer break. He might be playing in a youth tournament, but for now, we want to give Rickards his first start. And the same for Gwyn Morgan. He's going to start right back, though Jack Hankin will come off the bench. Morgan, not match sharp, not got 90 minutes in him yet. The rest of the team's the same, all of the youngsters are there, still spearheaded by George Wickens, who's come right back into form when we've needed him with the youngsters. So into the final game of the season we go, a very strong side, a decent bench. Now can we finish the season in style with this young brilliant team? So the four changes from the last game made, Wickens the skipper in goal, one late change on the bench, Ian Brooks comes in for Elliot Andrew just to give us an extra midfield option. And he's struggling for fitness as well, and with someone staying next year we've got to keep him fit. Our former player Arwin Baker, who Barry signed in January, is on the bench. They've got Connor Smith and Harry Gray, both of whom are rated two and a half star, and Cameron Evans for that matter. All three of them two and a half star by our squad standard, so should be better than most of our 11 here. What I don't understand, and it's probably down to their former manager, is why they're not competing further. I'm just hoping this summer they can get three or four in if they're in Europe. Jimmy Jones is a better manager than their last one. And maybe they'll be able to compete and make it a top three rather than a top two. One European run and they can turn professional, don't forget. So let's go and get out there, pick up where we left off. It was a comprehensive and comfortable victory against Aberystwyth. And we need another professional job today. It's Barrytown United away from home. And hopefully we finish the season with a win. Well, we're back 17 minutes in. There's been nothing to see so far as Harry Gray gives it to Smith, the two stars of this team, particularly going forward. And there's Gray's quality through to McCauley Power. And he's into the back of the net. It's half time. As that was playing out, I've just looked at a couple more of them. And they've got Carol and Hosey down the right wing, who are both two-star by our side. So what I'm going to say is I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed with you. The ultimate half-time team taught that for a negative one. But let's go and get into the second half. I think a few of the youngsters have struggled here because they're a side that are more comfortable on the ball, Barry. They're not playing longer. They're keeping it. And we're finding that hard. So what we're going to do, we're going to demand more. We've got about five minutes till we make subs. I'm not going to bring all first teamers on, but we will make a couple of tweaks in that regard. As Power picks it up on the left, the goal scorer for Barry Town Into Smith and now Carroll. Really good side they've got. I hope they can compete next year. Of course, they're the side that last won the league before us. As Banks nicks it from the poor pass. Sinclair picks it up. Through to Joe Duffy. The one star up front. He's got to score. And he does score. Martin Sinclair with the assist, the youngster. And we're just over an hour gone. It's one all. We're level. 
and quite frankly, it isn't deserved. Only our second shot of the game. We'll go and make a couple of changes because Rickards has really struggled at left back in his first start. So Dean Rogers will come on for him. We'll do the same at right back. We'll just switch them. So Morgan off and Hankin on. He's not quite fully fit yet. And Harvey Lewis anxious. Sinclair's tired. Tom Jones hasn't been great. And Banks has been poor up front. So let's bring Dean on. For half an hour, we'll have the swan song up front of the star two strikers together. And let's see if they can get themselves the winner here. 1-1. Only been three shots in the game. And fingers crossed, we can get one more crucial one. As from the left, it's Dean Rogers, the sub with a throw-in. Has been out of the side for a while, quite unhappy. Had a few injury knocks as well, but he's back into it now as Duffy gets it wide to him. Rogers from the left-hand side can cross to Sinclair, though. Goes short and it's intercepted by Gray. The second ball's much better, though. Evans heads away. His power, the goal scorer off the left wing. Can they create something on the counter, Barry? Look, a good side here, but they give the ball away. And Holding plays a 1-2 with a sub, Hankin. Up towards Dean, who loses out in the air. But it falls for Hankin on the right air side again. He goes back to Williams. Into Hankin. Chance to cross for the two strikers. Back to Williams for a third time. Someone's got to deliver it. Hankin has it again. Can they find the cross? They can't. They go all the way back to Holding. He chips it forward to Max Dean. I think he's offside. He is. The flag's up. The keeper had saved it anyway. And it's one all with 20 minutes remaining. As from the left-hand side, we've got a throw again with Rogers. Myers hoofs it downfield, but Banks should get there first. He's got Holding alongside him. Instead, switches it flamboyantly, I would say, to Hankin. Up to Max Dean, who's in for the second. And Bangor City turn it around. Doesn't matter what team you put out. If you've got that front two, you're always going to have a chance. Thomas Barker beating it is near post, but Max Dean has put power on that finish. And we've seen him score from there at least 15 times this year. 2-1 to Bangor City. And almost the perfect finish to the season as Lewin picks it up in a holding role. Plays to Jack Hankin at right back who's made a massive difference. It's been brilliant and he's found Max Dean here again. Max Dean scores again. It's disallowed. Is it for a foul? Is it for offside? I think it's offside. But Jack Hankin, been the best player on the pitch since he's come on. A wonderful effort from him. As Sinclair gives it away in the middle. Hankin recovers and wins it back. Gets it back to Wickens, the keeper. Long ball downfield towards Duffy. Flicks it on. Tom Jones, the number 10, running off him. Got to score. And he puts it straight at Thomas Barker. He's been the one disappointment in these two games. Been brilliant off the bench so often this season. But not made much of an impact in these matches. As Williams has an in-swinging corner. Up towards Max Dean. And he's headed away. Bollard can counter here. But the highlight ends. No real pressure on us. And they've gone three up front. But nothing created. Just the one shot for the goal. And it's Bangor City 2 away at Barrytown United with one. And we finish the season with another three points and by matching last year's total. TNS finished with a victory as well, as did Aberystwyth, but not enough to catch up in terms of goal difference. Carmarthen wrapped up seventh, so they'll be in the European playoff. But the question is, depending on who wins the Welsh Cup final, will it be Aberystwyth in and Barrytown fighting for it? Or vice versa, with Barry third in the league? I mean, either way, I think Barry will have to go through the playoff because the other side is below third. So what we've got to hope is Aberystwyth beat Haverford West because one of them needs the money and I trust Aberystwyth to spend it better. Let's get ahead to our end of season review. We'll have a look at the youngsters too and see which ones we're going to keep for next season. Who's going to start in this brilliant side? Here we go then, end of season review. And it's quite sad just seeing those two little trophies sitting there. Where's the third one? We're missing one. But unfortunately, it's not to be. So, of course, some of the stars this year. George Ratcliffe, who's had a brilliant season as backup keeper. Harvey Lewis looked really good. Keegan Riley had a few games before going out on loan, but he's done really well where he's gone. So, could well come back and be first choice next year. Hampson's loan ends. We're not going to get him back. But I think Riley might be ready for first team football. Hampson had a decent season on loan. Elliot Andrew played a few games when he came in. And we did sign one player late in the window, Dara Leahy. He's come in about a month or so ago. Can't be registered till the summer, but he's going to be our backup left back as Kieran Clark's moving on in the summer. Of course, in terms of the season, the big positive is the league. We were brilliant for a long time, but we just had that little poor spell and threatened to give it away. But the second half of the season, once it split, we found our own, particularly after the European run ended. The Champions League, another disappointment out in the second qualifying round, this time on away goals to Maccabi Tel Aviv. In the Europa League, we struggled on the final day and went out by a heartbreak to Rapid Vienna. But what that meant is in the Europa Conference, we got to the second knockout round. An away goals victory against St. Gallen and narrow defeat against Galatasaray. And to be honest, we look pretty good. So we've got to be pleased with the progress we're making and the consistency we're starting to show in Europe. In the SPFL Trust Trophy, heartbreak in the final as Port Vale beat us. 
It was 3-2, wasn't it? Why does it say 2-all? We definitely lost 3-2 after extra time. But Port Vale won that trophy, of course. The Welsh Cup, we went out to Aberyst with. It was another poor one. And again, we lost 4-2 after extra time. So he's not counting the goals after the 90-minute mark. The League Cup, we did win to go alongside the Welsh Premier League. And that's the one we've often thrown away in recent years. So we've got to be pleased with that. Although we required penalties to beat Newtown. So it was hardly convincing. But TNS put up a fight. They did get in the title race this year. And again, that's a good sign for Welsh football. Ian Brooks got goal of the season in that very first game of the very first episode of this year that we saw. A brilliant win against Dinamo Kiev. Another match on camera. Probably one of our favourite games so far in this series. And the biggest win was a 7-2 victory at Haverford West. Thanks to two Callum Maguire goals in second half stoppage time. A man who's no longer here, of course. In terms of revenue, some good news. The club reputation's up to two start. Hopefully the league reputation will be as well. We did lose a little bit in terms of sponsorship. I'm not quite sure why. Broadcast revenue down heavily. I'm not sure what's caused that because we were in the Europa League group stages still. So maybe it was just a share of the pooling. I'm not quite sure. Corporate and hospitality's down. Competition prize money's down. And is that because I think we got one less win in the Europa League group stage, which would have been an extra sort of 500 grand in the coffers? The match day commercial and retail's down as well, but it's still pretty good to be honest. Maybe fans are just getting used to success. If we look at how we lined up, the star was the diamond, of course. Oh, because of Maguire leaving, Tom Jones is in the best 11 for the season. Harvey Lewitt is in there ahead of Archie Woods in a holding role. And Cannell's in ahead of Williams, despite not being first choice. That's certainly controversial. Archie Woods has broken the record for worst discipline. All of the other awards basically went to Max Dean. He was brilliant this season. And it's history in the making again as we win two trophies, have another great European run and make a final in the SPFL Trust Trophy where we played an English side for the first time. So a really good season and next year is where some of these youngsters are potentially going to break in. We got to see five or six of them in action in the final games of the season. We know Tom Jones is the star. We know a couple of them won't make it. But the likes of Martin Sinclair really improving and has a good personality. Stefan Banks at the back doing exactly the same. We're really starting to push on now. And if we can keep that conveyor belt of young talent coming through, even if not for us, but for the Welsh League, we've just got to know which ones we're going to keep in early because we've got to sell them on while they're on these lower wages. But if you did enjoy this episode and this season, we'll finish on the competition screen. Please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from Two Long Term Stories. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the season and what you thought of some of those youngsters in the final couple of games. And of course, we'll be back for a big transfer special in two days' time with Bangor City. A chance to start another European run, a chance for our other clubs in the nation to start from the second qualifying round. And fingers crossed, a little bit of progress to be made. We're getting there, we're starting to see some activity across the country. And we just need to continue pushing the coefficient up so we can see the rest of the nation develop as well. Hopefully I'll see you next time for a big transfer special with Bangor City. All the other playlists are in the eye above. But thank you for watching as always. You'll continue support with the series. And I'll see you next time for a big transfer special. Uh -huh.